Hi, I'm going to do a quick demo using Actura to uh, about creating a, a a concept map. Just the beginning, just the basics, so you understand um, how to use this tool to, to kind of put that together. Uh, first, all I'm going to do is is I've started just by creating a new document, and since this is a one-page document, I don't need some of the site building prototyping features that um, that. Uh, I'm sure it opens up with it. So I'm going to close this widget, that window. I'll close this master's window. I'll close this widget properties. And I'll close this page notes and dynamic panel manager. So it's a lot simpler to see what's going on and have a bigger drawing space. There are different uh, widgets to choose from. The two that come installed are Flow, which is was showing in Wireframe. Um, basically, we're working with the Flow um, diagram elements. Now in the Dan Brown book he talks about representing um, entities on your on your uh, map as circles because they don't imply a grid or a hierarchy or structure and you can sort of make the flow work in different directions without the con the the sort of confines of what a rectangle or a square implies. So let's say I'll call this students. And what do students do at a university? Remember, this isn't so much about the website as it is about the behaviors, the participants, the content that a website represents. So students, um, they go to a cafeteria. So I would say, let's pull out another one here. And I would say they eat food. Okay. So I'm going to draw a relationship between these two. So up here are these little selection modes. And I'm going to go to the one that has a little connector. And when I pass this cursor over one of the connection points, the little red box comes on. Click that and drag it to the node I want to connect to, and it comes on. And it very nicely draws my line, puts the arrow in the proper end, just like that. And then if you drag it around, you see these little alignment points, which are kind of really handy. So what is the relationship with students and food? Well, if I double click this line, the verb, as Dan Brown points about putting in, is eat. Students eat food. Okay. So what does this imply? Well, where is food stored? Food is at a cafeteria. So students eat food, so may perhaps what this um, the website might want to represent are menus that will provide information to students because they eat food. Okay, what are else? What other activities do, you, do students do at a university? Well, they use a library. So I'll make call this library, and I'll click click my little uh, connection tool there, and I go like this. And what do students do at a library? Double click on a line and they study. Okay, so there's two connections, two kinds of content. So let's draw another uh, circle, which maybe is parents. Now, what do parents do at a university? What are their interests in, in, in colleges and universities? Well, let's see, they have to pay tuition. So let's draw a circle. And actually, one of the ways to cut and paste the circle you made already, called the bursar's office. Connect these two. Double click it to put in the verb, and I'll say they pay bills. Okay, so we have one relationship there. Relationship there. Uh, what else do parents do at the university? Well, parents might check uh, a calendar. Or actually, we could call those, I wouldn't call it a calendar, I would call it events. And events can be the end of school, events can be um, um, 
social events, it could be a concert, it could be any number of things. What a parents, so let me get my line here and I'll connect this. And what do parents do? Check schedules. I would say check a calendar. Now here's something that parents and students will take their advantage of. So I'm going to move these down. And get connection cool from here. And what do students do with events? Check for things to do. So we're starting to build up our diagram here. Um, now, you, layer two of what Dan Brown talks about is trying to make the diagram say more about, by creating certain kinds of emphasis. So for instance, since students are the center of the university's world, I'm going to put them in the middle and put these activities around the sides. Leave parents, we'll put parents in the middle because they're, they're the actors, they're, they do things at the university. Okay, one of these lines is sort of backwards. Uh, that's the one from this parent, so click on here and we'll do is so bring this up to here. Make that a little easier to read. Oh, notice what it does is it draws a little blip over the line for you. You bring the parents up here. Okay, that works better. And we can bring the food over here. So basically you want to organize this to make the diagram easier to read. Now since students are a key group and they're actors, you can make and emphasize this as, as a key group to look at. So what we can do is I can make the line the edge darker. I can change the fill here a different sort of fill color. That was the line color. Uh, here's the fill color. Give it a color. And that way we start to create emphasis. So you can work on your maps, uh, building them out. Another thing you can do actually is these lines, you can change the weight of, these, of the connection lines too. You can make them thicker. It's an important relationship. So if the student's relationship to the library is more important than, let's say, the relationship to food, I don't think many students would say that, um, then you can change the emphasis of the line by making it bigger or changing its color, and so forth. So those are just some of the things you can do with Xure. We'll be using Xure a lot more in the weeks to come. This is a pretty simple diagram to start with. You don't have to make it any more elaborate than it, than it needs to be. Um, keep just read the instructions in my, in, 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 on the module and read uh, Dan Brown's book. We'll for specifically read about layer one and layer two in terms of the basics and adding more detail in layer two. You don't really have to do layer three in terms of what he describes as. Now when you import this, export this for me to look at, the best way to do this is as a PDF. And Macintosh uh, remember this, it, it's using this kind of website metaphor. Notice the tab here says home. Um, I could probably rename that. I'm not sure how to do it at the moment. What I would do is print what it calls the home page. See the tab says home. And I will save as a PDF. And just call it uh, test to PDF. I'm going to put it on my desktop. The advantage of a PDF is that when I open that in uh, to view it, in this case preview on the Macintosh, um, it does a really nice job of scaling. If I can get uh, blow it up a bit, scales them as vector graphics. Okay, one I made earlier. If I scale, if I open this one, which is a PNG file. It looks good uh, at the actual size, but once I start enlarging it, it gets pixelated. So definitely export as a PDF, um, however you do that in, in Mac. It's pretty straightforward. Windows uh, use a PDF exporter tool. So that's it. That's my basic little demo of making a contact map using Xure. Um, I found with this program. We'll be going into more detail later on. Um, 
that's for it. Now, that's for it. That's that's it for now, folks. Thank you.